Hello everybody, I'm Eternal Flame, and since we've finally gotten to that point in the anime, where we've gotten to the point in the anime where Choso decides to swap sides in order to help Yuji Itadori, his own little brother, instead of going on the bad guy's side anymore. However, in this timeline, I would like to explore the possibility of if Choso was able to get himself together even further faster than he originally did after the Yuji battle. In this timeline, I would like to explore the possibility of what if Choso showed up to help against Mahito in that fight and see how that would change the timeline. I'm Eternal Flame and let's get straight into the video. However, before we even start the video, be sure to like and subscribe and like anime content like this. We got a lot more on the channel and let's do this. Now, I've decided the point we're going to have Choso show up is right when Toto and Nita show up as well, where Yuji is getting broken and really heavily beaten up. Choso is going to show up right around the same time that Toto shows up. How before we can even get into the story, there are a few questions I need to cover, which are two in particular. How strong is Choso, and is Choso able to hurt Maito's soul? Now, I'll cover if Choso is able to hurt Maito's soul first, and then I will cover how strong is Choso after. Choso is very much able to hurt Maito's soul, by the way. Choso is able to hurt Maito's soul for the same reason Yuji is able to hurt Maito's soul. Because this is something that I and a lot of people forget about, I think, which is the simple fact that Choso is possessing another body. And that is how he ended up coming back to life. Thus, he has two souls inside of his body and he is be aware of the soul. So to answer the question, Choso has something that most people don't often have as an advantage that they'd have against Maito, which is that he is able to directly hurt Maito's soul because he is a vessel, as well as the method also being directly compared to how Sakuna functions. We know for a fact that Choso is able to most definitely hurt Maito's soul. So he is able to hurt Maito's soul, that's good and dandy, but how strong is Choso really? Well, Choso is very, very strong. With flowing blood red scale stack, he is able to spar in direct hand-to-hand -hand combat with purpose realized Yuji, who Yuji, before he even realized his purpose, was able to strike as hard as Nanami does. And then he gets even stronger after he realizes his purpose, and Choso is still able to spar with that Yuji and go hand-to-hand -hand bar for bar with that Yuji. Now, without flowing blood scale stack, Yuji is able to do critical amounts of damage to him in three hits. It does really heavy damage. However, he still does have flowing red scale stack in order to do hand-to-hand -hand matchups. However, hand-to-hand -hand is not really where Choso excels. Where Choso actually excels is ranged, and he has a lot of good range capabilities. For example, he has Slicing Exorcism, which is able to create several small threads of blood that are able to cut through things like razors, which is going to be extremely useful for getting rid of several of Maito's transfigured humans, which are only around the grade 2 to grade 3 level, as directly stated by Toto. So that's going to be extremely useful for dealing with large clusters of people, especially as shown in the Gojo vs. Disaster Curses fight, because that was how it was mainly being used in order to help distract Gojo's mind even further. On top of that, Choso also has access to the ability to cover his body or specific parts of his body in blood to heavily increase the durability of his body even further, with Yuji directly comparing Maito's distorted killing form to that shield and nothing else. Of course, this does have a massive risk on Choso's body to begin with, however, this can be used in a pinch if absolutely needed. Now, I'm also not saying that distorted film of killing Monito is less durable than that, he is not, but it's very important because this durability exceeds that of Hanami's considering this is the main comparison that is drawn to, and us previously knowing that Yuji's hits are not able to reach this in comparison to Yuji in Goodwill who is able to hit Hanami to begin with. Choso also has access to the Piercing Blood, which the Piercing Blood is something Yuji has to straight up aim dodge in order to actually move out the way of. It is that fast of an attack that he has to slide under it. Of course, it's only talking about the initial beam being fired and not actually when Choso changes its direction around. However, it's still fast enough to do that and it does so much damage to Yuji's arm, it nearly breaks. It's absolutely insane of an attack. He's also able to make his blood be launched out like little sickles as well and do it in quite abundance as well and then pull that blood back towards him and just do it again. But most of all, he's able to use the supernova attack, which is done by heavily compressing blood into small little orbs or having them explode. Then he can either have around him basically shielding him, he can fire out directly towards people, etc. These are all very useful applications of blood manipulation, especially against someone like Mahito. 
Most of all, and this is going to be by far and away the most important thing, he can fire out torrents of blood at people in order to keep them away from him. Which, against someone like Monito, is going to be extremely important. Mainly because Monito's main way is one-touching people and then finishing them off. Furthermore, Monito at this current point in time will not be able to one-shot Choso either. So, yeah. Furthermore, and this is something really, really important to note as well, Choso is going to start this battle off with an immense, immense rage buff, so he's going to be even stronger. We know this because Choso is very easy to anger when it comes to his brothers, so Choso watching basically Maito bully his brother and break him to the ground is going to give Choso a massive rage amp. So now that we've gotten the scaling out the way, and how strong Choso is, and the fact Choso can harm the soul, I'm going to talk about the battle and how the battle massively changes. So the point where Choso arrives in the battlefield is when Mahito is about to go for a slash on Toto, but Toto swaps places with Mahito, and that is when there's going to be something that catches everyone there off guard which is going to be a piercing blood directly hitting Mahito through the arms and launching him back. Now, at first, everyone's going to be extremely confused, especially Mahito, and Mahito is first going to think, okay, there's a pretty good chance that he just meant to hit Toto, but Toto swapped places with me and I got hit instead. Because Mahito would still believe that Choso is an ally of his, he would be happy that Choso arrived only to be hit with another piercing blood and realize, Choso is angry and pissed off at Mahito, shouting for him to stop hurting his brother. As Toto realizes, Choso is likely in a similar effect to him, where he has another brother, another brotherly bond, and Toto is very, very intrigued at this new brother he has, but he'll think about it later, because he knows his brother is the type to make friends like this. So while Toto gives his speech to Yuji to bring him back to the world, Choso begins his battle against Maito. As Maito immediately also notices that Choso is hitting a lot harder than usual, and more importantly, Choso is a natural predator for Mahito, just like Yuji is, because he is able to hit the soul and realize that Choso is a vessel, a vessel he directly brought back as now a 1v1 would begin, with Maito at least preparing himself to attempt to put the very thing he brought back down, and put him back to the grave where he belonged. As the battle would immediately start out with Maito trying to go in for close quarters combat. He was in a close quarters combat type of mood, and he knew if he could get his palms on Choso, he'd be able to end it so he could focus back on the other two opponents in front of him. Choso had already done some damage and a mark to Mahito, with him being at even less than 40% of his current soul HP because of those two attacks. He knew he would need to damage and touch Choso several times in order to kill him, so he'd need to kill him as quick as possible, and doing Idle Transfiguration would be the best way to do so. However, Choso immediately made several blood spears across the area and just not let Mahito get close to him. An advantage Choso has that most other people don't have is Choso is very, very much aware of what Mahito's technique actually is. So he knows letting Mahito touch him will be incredibly dangerous, so keeping things at a range is best for him. Furthermore, Choso is naturally a ranged fighter, so this is the best possible situation for him. So Choso pretty early on is going to also create another wave of blood, making sure to have several supernovas around him and prepare just in case Monito does try and launch more idle transfigured humans at Choso directly, while keeping up his range repeatedly by having the blood spheres launch at him again and again before turning them back into an orb, in order to get Monito at a further away distance while charging up a piercing blood. Now, it should be noted, Choso is not physically stronger than Monito. If Mahito and Choso were to scrap in a 1v1 in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Mahito would most certainly win, considering Mahito's relativity to a much stronger Yuji in comparison to Choso's relativity and above level to a much weaker Yuji being purpose-realized Yuji in comparison to late Shibuya Yuji. However, Choso has the advantage of he is not so slow that they're going to be speed blitzing him, so he'll be able to constantly keep making blood weapons in order to keep Maito at a range. Furthermore, he will be able to reinforce some parts of his body with blood and cover them with blood just in case Maito even tries to get close, so Maito will have to really try his best to even hope to try and touch Choso. As Maito this time manages to avoid the piercing blood. Now, for Yuji, it was a 50 50 chance whether he could 
it dodged the piercing blood or not. However, Mahito should scale relative to, if not a bit faster than that Yuji, so he should be capable of dodging the piercing blood, albeit very difficultly. However, the moment he does that, a supernova is going to be launched out and exploded on him near immediately, which is also going to end up doing some damage to Mahito's soul. So Choso is already doing pretty good at keeping Mahito at a range so far and actually keeping him there, while also being able to damage him with his several soul attacking maneuvers, because every single attack from Choso will directly damage the soul. However, before Choso can control a supernova to come back to him, he sees something very very interesting as he hears a clap noises and sees Yuji has swapped places with the supernova after the supernova had finished exploding, and Yuji land a direct black flash on Mahito right after. However, Choso doesn't have much time to focus on it, as he very quickly hears Toto right after call him to fire a piercing blood at himself, and Choso immediately picked up on what had just happened, that Toto was the one who swapped their places, as Choso immediately fires a piercing blood right at Toto, and right at the last moment, Toto claps again, swapping places with Mahito, making Mahito take a third piercing blood directly to the face. Now they had a massive, massive advantage. In the original canon, Toto's only real way to actually do damage against Mahito was through Yuji. While he had other things he could swap places with, Yuji was the only thing that could damage Mahito. Now, they're going to have several blood orbs and blood-based weaponry that they can swap places with that they can use in order to hurt Mahito directly because Choso is also capable of harming the soul. Furthermore, it also won't be long until Toto lands his own Black Flash, adding even more pressure to this. I think Toto would land his own Black Flash even earlier because he's going to be left behind by everybody, with Choso's ability existing there to be able to hurt Mahito and being much more useful in the battle because of how much versatility it offers, Yuji and Mahito both already landing their own Black Flashes, so Toto wouldn't want to feel left behind landing his own Black Flash, which is also going to put Mahito at even worse soul HP. In the original timeline, when Mahito tried the 0.2 second domain, he was at less than 40% of his soul HP because of all the damage he had taken from Yuji up to this point, as well as Nobara. But now it's going to be even lower than that because he's going to have to deal with the fact that Choso had done so much damage to him. As I have gone over, he is going to have taken a lot of hits directly from Choso by this point, especially with Toto knowing to swap places more often with Choso's blood manipulation attacks and Yuji rather than just Yuji and random rocks. Furthermore, whenever Mahito does try and use several idle transferred humans, Choso is immediately going to use slicing exorcism to cut up the transfigured humans and not even let Mahito start to even try using that. Now this is the point where we get to the 0.2 second domain expansion, and in this situation I see one of three scenarios actually happening and they're all kind of really insane. Scenario 1, Mahito is way too exhausted to even cast the 0.2 second domain expansion by this point. He has taken way too much damage, so yeah, he's kind of about to just fail to cast his domain because of how exhausted he is, which is going to lead to several attacks landing on him, likely another Black Flash from Yuji at this point, as well as a Piercing Blood at the same time, while Toto is still going to cast his simple domain nonetheless. With Mahito being extremely injured by the end of all of these attacks, and at the last final moment, Yuji landing one final Black Flash to finish off Mahito once and for all. That's by far and away the most boring timeline, so let's get into timeline number 2. Timeline number 2 assumes Mahito actually manages to cast the 0.2 second domain expansion, and this is where things get really really interesting. Mahito is at currently a much much weaker point of his soul HP, so there is a pretty good chance Toto is going to be able to cast his simple domain and actually be able to resist for long enough, either that or he will still end up cutting off his hand. However, the interesting part of this comes in Choso and whether Choso will be able to resist idle transfiguration or not. Cause by what we know, Choso does not have simple domain. Now there is a chance Choso has access to domain amplification cause he was also sent alongside Hanami and Jogo in order to fight Gojo, but I'm not going to make that assumption that he does. However, what I will say is this, I don't think Choso would instantly die from this either. Choso has more than enough curse energy and an awareness of the soul. 
plus it is a 0.2 second domain. If it was the full potency domain, I think he would end up dying. However, we do know that Mahito's soul touches really depends on his soul HP heavily, and as I was trying to make clear, Mahito has a much weaker soul HP. So while this would definitely do damage to Choso, and Choso would need to heal from it, it wouldn't really kill him. So the best case scenario I see for Mahito is this ends up in a very, very similar situation to Canon, where Yuji ends up beating him anyway with the help of Toto and Shoso maybe. But the worst case scenario for Mahito is he just dies soon after in a similar scenario to scenario 1. And then there's scenario 3, which is what I see being the most likely. Some of Choso's spare blood that is already near Mahito, because there's going to be spare blood all around the battlefield, is already going to hurt Mahito and interrupt the domain from being casted, which is going to lead back to scenario 1 where he gets bombarded with hits and dies. Either that or Big Brain Man ends up fighting all three of them at once and stealing Mahito in the process away. Now this is already a massively better timeline, because I see scenario 3 being the most likely, where there's some spare blood around and Choso ends up triggering that, completely interrupting Mahito's domain from even being casted. So Toto ends up keeping his hand in this timeline, and he still has the Black Flash amp he gets after nonetheless. So Toto is going to still be a viable combatant and able to help them and help them after this battle and help them with what is coming next, as well as Choso now being on their side earlier as well. And all of them just being together, like the new happy brother family that they actually are going to end up being. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into manga spoilers or the manga timeline purely because I don't want to give manga spoilers for this video. I purely wanted to focus on how he would end up changing the fight itself. But yeah, that's about everything. I want to see what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.